So I'm at the library right now. I'm having my personal computer, but I also have the um, library computer. That's the other Zachary. Um, okay, let me share my screen real quick. Um, let me get to it. Okay, can everybody see the, the mm -hmm. map right here? Yes. Yeah. So here's Waitley. Um, I did a lot more work since the last time uh, you saw me. Um, I actually, this past week, I, I was fortunate to go out into the Waitley Woods and see um, where these walls actually were and see if I was correct with um, um, how I found them. But let me show you like the whole process of how I, I found them. Um, first, I like downloaded this elevation file right here. And it was just a bunch of these squares that I had to like form into one little file. Um, and it shows from like low elevation to high elevation. Um, and from here, I transferred it um, into a hill shape function, which is basically taking a light source and casting that light source down onto the land and seeing shadows. Um, it surprisingly goes through trees and shrubs and just goes to the bare bones of the land and the shape of the um, elevation and seeing shadows. So you can see these stone walls. Um, and you can even, the light source can be from like a different point in like the sun's um, amplitude. Um, so you can, I did it at a 45 degree angle and then a 315 degree angle, which is basically just the other side. It's kind of mm -hmm. more. Um, so right now the sun is setting. One, yes. Um, so this is what the whole, whole map of the, the hill shade function looks like. From afar, it kind of looks very just, just bare gray. Doesn't really look very enjoyable. <laughs> but if you zoom in to, I'll just zoom into some more urbanized areas, some some um, <laughs> locations. <Good luck. laughs> Relatively speaking. The, oh yeah, yeah, there's downtown. <laughs> <laughs> and if you um, get rid of this, uh, I'll get rid of the elevation too. If you get rid of the hillshade, um, you can see all of the open land and the, the um, buildings and such. Um, and you can see it more flat in these areas that are fields and see more rugged um, places where the, the natural formation of the land occurs. Um, you can also see property lines as well right here and it's here as well. Um, and so first I, I didn't like going towards these already set in stone, um, <laughs> set in stone um, formations with um, property lines that are current. So I actually went first to just where there was majority um, forest. Um, so I started over here, which is a great area. Um, and I started with this um, hillshade function and I zoomed into where these lines were occurring. Um, and over here, can everybody see all these lines? Yeah. 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 Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and these lines, like they're pretty straight too. So they can't be just like a natural, just a bump in the woods or anything. So these, these have to be some straight formations. Um, and basically, um, once I found those, I looked on the other, this other um, hill shade from the other angle, and they were much more like rugged and, and um, easier to see and easier pronounced. Um, and these happen everywhere over these these huge areas of wood. There's more in here, less, no, let me show this and see if this is better. A little bit. Um, there's like a line right there, line right there. Um, there was also a really nice one. Can you see Bill O'Bear's <laughs> compost heaps show up on that? That's funny. <laughs> um, I'm not. Sure, but um, <laughs> down, like, <laughs> we should tell um, you where they are. <laughs> <laughs> um, I one just, cool I area just saw was, them. Oh, nice. Um, one cool area was down near the, the border of um, Haydenville and Waitley. If I get rid of this town border, um, let me go to the other hell shade. This one's a better one. Um, yeah, you can see this huge line that's like right along the border. It's even more pronounced over here, just like right along here as well. Um, 
but it was interesting because stone walls, there's multiple purposes. Sometimes uh, they can be locations where people just clear cut the forest and started um, making um, farms and then made the walls on the property. But sometimes they even move these stones to where they think the town property lines should be, um, which is found right here um, where the town border is. Um, there's also like a lot of these straight lines um, within here, let me zoom in, like these straight lines that just ran across the whole screen, um, which are really interesting. Um, but overall, let me show you all of the, the walls that I found, which before, if you, if you don't remember, it was like all in here pretty much. And then a mm -hmm. sum over in Mount Esther a little bit, and then a little bit down here and a few splotches here and there. But after I looked back, um, and got this uh, new kind of hill shade. I found more, mm -hmm. a lot more. Wow. Well, and they're like all over. <laughs> so Zachary, the pink lines are your drawings, right? They are, they are my drawings that you I found on, on GIS. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, um, yeah. Um, and another, other than a certain functions for stone walls, like border lines or property lines, they also did a lot of work with um, roads and doing double road walls um, for the roads, which is very clear right here. Um, it pr practically ran through this whole abandoned road um, that is still kind of used now, but not um, not completely. Um, and is, it are you through. are you are you on Chestnut Mountain Road? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm losing my orientation. I think I am. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't find names of the roads um, since it's not that's, really used that's, anymore. Isn't that but Dry Hill. Is it? Is it? Is um, it I've just lost track of where we are. <laughs> yeah, it's down. <laughs> You're good. It's over by Williamsburg Road. Um, I can get rid of the little shade. That might be better. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, here we go. This is the, the reservoir right up here. And it's just running, running down right here. Um, and then it, there's also this small road right here that ran west um, and east that also had a lot of double walls, um, which was- Oh yeah, it's grass hill. It's grass hill. Um, grass hill, okay. You might, Zachary, would it be interesting to you to see some of the historic maps of town, yeah, that would be that would be really interesting. Okay, I, I will. I'll send you a, a link. Um, okay, they're not all not all the roads are on the map, but there are roads on some of the older maps that are not in use anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. it was interesting when I was walking around. I would see certain certain um, rock walls that synced up with other ones that I had already found. Um, and it drew like a big property line, especially like this one right here became like one huge property um, as well as this one and that one. Um, and I also found more, not only in this one, but I, I had the chance to go to uh, uh, Esther Mountain. Um, and I found all of these ones in very like high elevations that were going from all, all, all over like hills. Um, which I found was interesting because I usually thought that they were getting um, farming on very flat land usually, but they were also like going on to like very hilly um, places. Um, but that was a majority of my, of how I found these stone walls was basically going on this hillshade and seeing where these like straight lines were occurring that wouldn't be occurring like naturally. Um, once I did find those and wanted to solidify more of um, what was like, could be other formations what, that I was not unaware of, um, I started including this, um, once this page loads, um, I started including this slope um, form, which I had to really look into because um, sometimes it would it would not be useful. Sometimes the pink would just be completely um, filled in like this area right here. Um, but once I like got rid of this 
wall, which I'll show you right here. Once I got rid of this wall and it was just this pink, I had to look for these patterns um, that were in the, uh, that was the absence of pink. And it, it, just to re reiterate, the pink um, is areas that are rel relatively flat and the absence where this gray is, that's where it's relatively um, a sharp incline. Um, so where these stone walls are, these areas right here is where it is relatively a sharp increase, um, but it's very sudden and very small. So I'm so it, it has to be, um, or it's clear to be um, more stone walls or 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 at least larger stone walls. Um, and if I bring it back, I thought it was interesting how um, down here, or is that? Yeah, I think it was right here. Sometimes they would veer away from where it started to get um, um, pretty uh, steep. Um, let me do one more. Yeah, so basically with the slope, it was just finding where the patterns with the, um, with the wall, walls were. Um, which helped a lot. In some cases, it didn't help. On Mount Esther, it didn't really help um, because it's so such a sharp incline and shallow everywhere. It's so um, drastic um, that would it didn't like, help too much. Would you like to see a picture of the walls, the steep walls on Mount Esther? Sure. I took some photos, but I, yeah, but I'd love you to. You did go up there then? I did. Um, okay, I didn't go good. completely into the woods, but I, I mainly stayed along the road. There was a lot of signs saying no trespassing. So I just stayed close to the road. Um, but I did see a lot of the walls that were just going all over, um, including walls that went through rivers and um, other just formations that um, changed the landscape through the years. Um, but yeah, that was, that was pretty much the, all of my whole process. I have a map as well. Let me get rid of some of these. Um, uh, uh. So here's the map of that I created, um, showing all of the, the walls. I included the double walls that were, are here, um, as well as the lakes and, and, and roads and such. Um, does anybody have any questions about it though? Just appreciation. Yeah, this is a big thing. Yeah, it was really nice and fun finding all of these stone walls. Before I, I had a couple here and there, but it was really nice going back and, and trying to find a lot more. I almost doubled it. I did a, um, what's it called? I did a, a I calcu calculated how, how long the, the stone walls were and the total length. Um, mm -hmm. Let me pull that up. And the average, no, it's not showing up for some reason. Yeah, so here, this is just um, the rock walls that are singled um, mm -hmm. minus the double rock walls. Um, and the sum is 36.7 miles um, in total. With the, with the double walls, it's calculated to roughly just over 45 miles in total, all across Whaley. <laughs> That's, um, and I, I guess we can conclude that since we're finding no stone walls in East Whaley, but East Whaley was settled very early, that that is probably because there are no stones to be dug in East Whaley. I mean, some of them It goes back to Lake Hitchcock and the yeah. sediment right. deposition below 300 feet. Right, because someone who wanted a stone wall in East Whaley would have had a big transportation challenge. Mm -hmm. Plus he, he would have had to convince somebody else to let him dig up rocks from another person's property. Yeah, that's... It, it that's interesting yeah so where is so the easternmost point um I, which is just a, a little bit above the word waitley 
Um, <laughs> the East that right there. Where where is that? That's the milk bottle. That's that's what I thought. Okay, so that's oh, right. Uh, that's that's cemetery. just just it's a cemetery. It's uh, it's yeah. the back of our property, but the stone wall does continue back downhill from there. But he, he probably know. couldn't see it. Yeah, right over to the cemetery. Okay. So it's just west of the dingle, or maybe I can't. Yeah, it's, interesting. It goes, it goes right up to the dingle there, and then it does continue down. This, the remnants of it continue down that slope. Sorry, is it north from here at this point? Or? Right there is where she's talking about. That's the easternmost line you have on your diagram. Yeah. That's and that's Judy's old backyard, Judy's grandfather's backyard. Yep. So, Allison, you're saying there are remnants down in the depression. Not, well, yes, not I know that's 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 a, you know I know that piece of property very well. And the no, stone I know wall, you do. I know you do. Yeah, but that's what you're talking. Was, about. But it's it's in terms of it being a very elegant wall. It's not particularly. It's a pretty ramshackle wall. That whole thing, um, but it does continue down the slope there, and then right over to towards this. this it continues right on the back line of that cemetery. And it makes oh, nice. sense that Zachary's methodology missed that because, in a sense, it skimmed right over the top well, of that depression. It's been borrowed. It's been borrowed um, from, and it's somewhat sunken. I see. Yeah, that that was a lot of issues with some of my work um, beforehand. Before I went out into the field, I found all of these stone walls, and when I was in the field, places where I didn't have walls were either near roads that I wasn't looking at initially or where they were so low to the ground that I, I could never find that on, on the software. Right. And, 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 they, software, ran out of, sorry, and they ran out of stones. They ran out of stones there. You, you will not find surface stones so much. I know there's some on, huh. on going down um, just, uh, Christian Lane a little bit, but it's, they're much harder mm -hmm. to find. Yep. Yeah, that was another issue that I found. I, with PIS, I can find pretty easily where stone walls are, where forests are, but finding them where property lines are, I was always, con I would not be completely confident whether it was a bunch of trees that was making the land more elevated or just a depression from the overall use of the field. Um, so I, I veered away from there, but there could be some few discrepancies where there are property lines. Yeah, and, and when you said at the very beginning, you know, here you, you pointed and said, now we're seeing the property lines. Is that because you chose to overlay the assessor's maps and the property divisions? No, actually that was part of the um, hillshade. Um, I can just see more clearly where houses do kind of show up on, on the, the software those well those aren't houses group. though Zach those are the pads the, oh. the the you know the grading around the houses ah see and then where, where there used to be yeah. black buildings see it th that's the lidar imaging so it's not showing you any of the architectural stuff it's showing you the grading right. of the pad around a house see there's no right. right just where you right were I don't think there's a house there yeah, no, see. it was like a depression. Right. Yeah, but there used to be. You could, or a barn. Was, your yard. I was going to say, like like the barn that someone took down behind my house. Yep. Right. <laughs> Commonly known as some idiot. There's pack growth down there and stuff that might show up. That's good. Right. Right. <laughs> so so are you now working on this for? a class or because you have become interested or obsessed with this? <laughs> I've, been, I've become obsessed with it, honestly. I did it for a class last semester and thought right. I was done until I, I met you guys. And, and then I, I started back up with it. It's great. It's good. But, but you're doing, are you doing all of this on the Mass GIS system or are you overlaying some other software? I'm doing it um, all completely, all of the files that I downloaded were from MassGIS. Um, and then I, I reshaped them through the software, yeah. 
so all of this, like the charts that you've built and the mm -hmm. dimensions and whatnot, is that all in the Mass GIS system? Or um, it, I I got only the files from Mass GIS, but through okay. the GIS software. Um, I, okay, so you're using. I, I yeah. See. So Mass yeah. GIS was the source of your data, but you're using a, a separate GIS software to do your analysis. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, so I downloaded I them from a website. Yeah. Okay. You downloaded the software from a website? No. Yeah, the I I, I downloaded them from the Mass GIS website. Oh, I'm sorry. You downloaded the data. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, I think, Alan, why don't you tell Zach what you and now Allison and I, mostly Allison, had been working on with the town border stones, because he might be interested in those. <laughs> those might be hard to find. Or maybe but... we could get him obsessed with those. That would be very good. <laughs> a few of them we haven't photographed yet, but there are at every corner point that you've you found you have an outline of the town. At, at every corner point, there is supposed to be some sort of uh, stone marker that uh, often has dates carved on it and like that indicate where the boundaries of the town were. And the select board used to go and walk these every, I think, five years, but they haven't done it in a while. I think the, the requirements from the state have changed. But the stones do still exist. We can find a lot of them. Um, I haven't 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 we found don't we have photos of about a dozen of them now yeah something like that there's 20 20 corners uh, including some of the there are witness marks along the uh, the Connecticut River where the uh, the town boundary actually falls the center of the river so there are markers on either side that point towards a, a thing in the middle of the river which is the actual boundary of the town but there are um, some stones near the river that uh, that can be used to find those points where the where the town boundary mm -hmm. actually is. One at the corner of uh, Hadley, Hatfield, Sunderland, and Waitley, and another one, Waitley, Deerfield, and Sunderland, up at the uh, by the bridge up further north on one sixteen. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. I almost went to this southwest corner. Um, I went as far as these double walls and then started going southward. I should have kept going. <laughs> there are walls all over the state. So. Yeah. Well, I tried to find, there are three of them down by the, the intersection of um, uh, the Westbrook. Where Hatfield and, and near Westbrook, but where Hatfield and Waitley meet, where Chestnut Plain turns into Pantry Road and there's a bit of a bridge. But yeah. uh, so far, I haven't find even the remnants of any of the three. And it may be that when the modern modern bridge was put in that they, someone just moved them or buried them. At least we haven't found those. Um, they, they usually don't just bury them if they're run by the right. sticks. They may be somewhere down there or they may not be. It's, you're right. 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 But, but Allison found some in the great swamp, <laughs> which is- yeah. Well, I found that southwest one. I have, you know, that's that one I did find, and that is planted in the set, you know, in the middle of a stone wall because the stone wall is also the property line and the town line. Mm -hmm. And there is one from uh, a couple of photographs from a guy in Williamsburg, who is uh, Eric Weber, I think, who is a one of the town historians, is, is interested in town history. So uh, he's got a couple of photographs of the Williamsburg Waitley boundaries, uh, the stones. But I don't think, and from what you've seen, Allison, have you found any actual walls around those things? Some of them are built into walls. They are in the walls because the walls are also boundary lines. Yeah. Yeah, some okay. of them are actually boundary lines. Some of them are just field boundaries where- Well, uh, they're, they're, they're property boundaries because because yeah. that's are, how yeah. the land was granted was by, you know within the town yeah. limits. Right. Right, so that's why that's why you have art these these parallel lines laid out artificially over terrain, 
is because they were done, you know, before probably anybody had ever been on some of this terrain. And so why, why can you zoom in again on all those parallel lines uh, going um, west, yeah, up on Mount Esther? Why, I haven't been up there, so it's not obvious to me, why are those not closed polygons the way they are. He just he's not picking up somehow his his surveying isn't picked up. Oh. There's there is a wall that runs the north. Those are let's call those east west walls. Yes, there's, a wall, there's a series of walls that run north south, but his shading is not picking up the the evidence of the wall, but it is there. OK, yeah, there were there were I went into the field on this this one right here, and there were some discrepancies with where the walls were. Um, there could be some more within the forest here i didn't get onto the west side so they could they no um, on the crest on the crest of the ridge running north south right right straight through that polygon that is mount esther is a wall okay yeah nice and the reason zach that those are on that mountain was not because anybody was growing agricultural uh plants there it's mm -hmm. because they were raising sheep hmm and those are all sheep grazing walls. That makes sense. Yeah, I was looking at this and I was like, why would anybody want to farm here? <laughs> well, with sheep, that makes more sense. In the 1830s and 40s, there was a big boom in sheep raising here and in Vermont and much bigger in Vermont. Uh, it was short lived, but that's that's where all it, when all those walls were built. Huh. A lot of those places were abandoned at that point, too. And, people and then the boom went. So, right. The Historical yeah. Society has a great photograph from the 20th century, not 19th, of a Waitley resident who was a master sheep shearer. Um, and Judy will probably remember his name. I do not remember his name. You should, but I don't. But you can see that the photograph is actually quite wonderful because the sheep has so much wool that you can't actually, you only know it's a sheep because you are told it's a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> it just looks like a huge pile of, of wool. Um, I think it's from about the 1950s. Does that sound right to you, Judy? 40s, 50s, 40s, and 40s not, 50s. It's not, yeah. it's not antique. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one, one thing I found interesting over here is I noticed that the walls were, the rocks were a lot thinner um, and mm -hmm. much higher. Well, that makes sense one. because- That's why. Yeah, it wasn't. It, it wasn't to clear the. See, some of these walls were made in different centuries, so clearing them for for agricultural herbaceous, you know, plants, it, it meant something different in seventeen hundred than it did in eighteen hundred than it did in nineteen hundred. So they're still building walls when we had um, motorized farm equipment, for example. You still wanted to get rocks out of fields so you could hay them because some of these are are hay fields now. And many of them became hay fields after they were done being sheep, you know, pens. Hmm. Uh, but the sheep walls, and if I could show you, you'll see on Mount Esther, there, there's some gorgeous walls there that are five feet high. They're clearly built and very carefully built um, to, to keep livestock inside. That's cool. Because you'd never go to that trouble if you were just clearing stones out of the way, you know, you just kind of pitch yeah. them to the edge and they make whatever they make. And you wouldn't take the time to pile them up and and make a standing wall like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Allison, do you want it? Do you, is it easy for you to show one of um, your photos of those walls? Uh, or not? Sure, you if you that? allow if you allow the screen share thing. Yeah. But don't you have to bless me or something? I, I think I have now done multiple participants can share simultaneously. All right. So can you see now? No. No. Can I try again? Hang on. Something's happened. Yes. Here you go. Now? Oh. No? OK. So this is, I, I got rid of that document that we looked at the other day. But um, let's look at this one. So here's, here's a, a field where. This is not a wall that was meant to contain livestock. This is a wall that was made to clear the field of these rocks that probably inhibited 
I'm not sure if they were turning over the soil here, but you know, if you were mowing this, uh, these, these rocks were in the way. Here's, here's the rock wall that goes on the spine of Mount Esther. So this is along that summit ridge. This is a north-south wall. Um, it's on the top of the mountain there. It's not particularly impressive, but here's a wall that oh is one of those ones that you showed in pink. And, and I'm taking this at my, I'm holding the camera here and I'm five feet tall. So you can see that this part of this wall is over my head. And it's a testament to the care that was taken that this thing is still standing 200 years later, this wall is still standing, would still keep a sheep, you know, on one side or the other. But this is what some, some of those walls look like on Mount Esther. Would it keep coyotes out too and wolves? No, coyote jumped that. Okay. Wouldn't keep me out. I mean, if I can get over it, Judy, coyote can get over it. <laughs> you can get it over just it, seems, It just seems high for a sheep, but... No, she can, you know, sheep are nimble. Got, Don't forget they're mountainous yeah. creatures, you know. But yeah, Zach, here's the LiDAR that. image of my property here. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. um, uh, you were looking, here's this place where your wall went down to the dingle. Oh. And we were talking about the westernmost spot right there just a minute ago. And then right. here, here is, and here's that spot that you found. This is, so here's my property and you can see assorted, you know, Pat, stop it. Uh, assorted things that look like walls. And here mm -hmm. in blue are the ones that I know are walls because I have stepped on them. So oh, that's how many nice. walls are just on, on our property here. Um, and this is Mount Esther. There's your picture of Mount Esther. And you can see faintly on here, there's, there's my walls, that, same as he could see on his LIDAR. Mm -hmm. So I think that tall one I just showed you is one of these northern walls, and it actually goes all the way over to, towards Mike Mahars here and across some oh. insane gullies and things. You mean towards Poplar Hill Farm? Is that yeah. what you mean by Mike Mahars? Can you guys see this? Ooh. This is this is that town marker down near um, Graves Farm, the Audubon place, that southwest marker, and you can see it's planted right in the middle of the stone wall here on the corner right. of the wall where the corner of the town is. Yeah. Yeah, the markers weren't, they were kind of extraordinary pieces of stone. <laughs> that can you see in he, here, you can start to see the numbers that are carved in. Yeah. The guy, the people used to go out every five years and to sort of register that they'd been there, they'd carve, this is 65, you know, oh, so they, would, they would carve the date, just the two, two numbers mm -hmm. in to show that they had been there. You've inspired me because this wall, not the They're same cool. stone, but this wall looks like what we believe to be the remnants of a border wall for Mother George Road down through our woods. Mm -hmm. It just goes on like that for, I mean, it, it's more than coincidence to have small boulders lined up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the way that they are. Um, yes. Yeah, very interesting. All right. You want me to share? We'll stop to share. There we go. Cool. So, so you inspired us too. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so is there anything else we can do for you in terms of your work? Um, not too much. I would I I appreciate to see the the property lines that you mentioned earlier, um, the historic ones. But other than that, no. I do have some photos that. I could share with you guys of stuff that I found. Um, not oh, too sure. much that would more be great. different than, but yeah. Um, let me share my screen. I think. Actually. Here we go. I think, let me start at the top. So this is the the mm. the road walls that one I one I found. Some mm -hmm. were closer together, but these were about uh, I'd say 15 feet apart. Um, mm -hmm. This was in the south the southwest corner. Um, that's just a, a one that was for farming, like you said. Um, this one is a taller one. Mm -hmm. I forget where this one was, but um, that one's cool. This one was um it's been now in a swamp but so it's been eroded a little bit but um 
this was the a wall that hooked up with another long, longer wall that made a complete new property. Um, this is a taller wall. Um, I found these two um, poles, oh, metal yeah. poles, right near a river um, by the south middle of the West Waitley, um, near the border, near the, um, oh, I forget what the plant is down there, but um, that, and then this one was Mount, on, Mount Esther. You can't really see in this photo, but this is like a pretty steep hill right here. It never, sure looks, as, it never looks as steep as it is. No, it never does. Still cool yep. though, seeing it in, in person. Mm -hmm. um, and then this one is the last one. This one just runs through straight through a river. I'm not sure if this river was there when they put it there, but um, you know, the river's literally running right through it and right over it. Um, well, yeah. we've, we've had so much precipitation in the last 12 months that a lot of the brooks have become rivers. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. um, and the, it's, it's really incredible. Um, we've seen whole streams forming in a, a neighbor's field. You see, right. Built the road, but now it's a stream. <laughs> <laughs> right. It makes it a lot harder to get his tractors up there. Right. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, yeah. Very nice. Well, thank you again. Yes. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and let us know if you can decide to. Can we get a come. copy of the, of the map? Yeah, for sure. I can download it. Um, I'll try to get a good resolution of it. Sometimes when I download images, they can become a little choppy. Um, but I'll try to get it as best as I can um, to send it over to you guys. Okay, Great. thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, thank yes. you guys for letting me do more work with this. This is so no, fun. It's, <laughs> no, it's been terrific. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah. So we'll say goodbye and good luck. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Have a good one. Thanks. Yeah. Very cool. It is cool. I, I'm really impressed that he decided to do so much more work. It's nice. Well, he, he, it took him a long ways into really better understanding about what yeah. walls are and why they're there. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, he, went out, he actually went outside in the real world and walked around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. on your property well that, no that's fine you know it's, just, it's nice to see him get out from in front of the computer screen and actually go look well it's a, it's a problem just generally now I, I think I told Allison this but I haven't told the rest of you he sent me a note about 10 days ago and said so I really want to look at some properties in the way he described the location I couldn't really tell whose property was but they're posted you know no trespassing should I, could I go on the properties? And I wrote back and said, no, you shouldn't. <laughs> I mean, I said more than that. But <laughs> well, some of the property on Mount Esther there is state property and the northern end of the, the mountain there is mass uh, right. DOR property, which he could go on. Um, right. But. Yeah, no, it's, it's interesting. And I. Yeah, a lot of the west part is uh, Northampton property too. It's owned by the water district, which. Right. Sometimes they're very protective of it. Other times they don't seem to care. So it's right. Um, well, I feel as though I at least understand a lot more than I did whenever we started talking about stone walls two or three years ago. So and lidar, you know, the value of the lidar. Yeah. Now yeah. I understand yeah. that, and yeah. now we all know how That's to use super mass useful. GIS. Yeah, yeah, and. Um, the um, 45 miles of stone walls is an interesting data point to talk. <laughs> oh, I bet that's, that's a fraction of what there really is. You think? Oh, well, I do. Of course, uh, we could have, course. we could play, we could play a guessing game, a lottery game. Who can guess closest? But if well, we found 45 miles, I bet there's 300, 400 miles. Uh, we'll have to, when we get his map, he seems to have come around. On sharing his map, when we um, when we get his map, we can look and see how many unclosed polygons there are. Because other than on the side of a road, there just wouldn't have been a fenced area that didn't have four edges. <laughs> you know? Right. So, well, um, unless it, unless it has now been, some of them have been cannibalized. So there are cannibalized right. walls that you don't see anymore. We have some here 
I think I said that before, you can clearly see where they at some point went and borrowed the rocks for a new foundation or a new something and they got them off the wall. Why wouldn't you? All right there, right next to the road. You know what that's called in classical archaeology? It's called spolia. That's the plural. And you see it when you're visiting a site, say a Renaissance church, and you suddenly realize that the keystone over the arch is the capital of a classical column because it fell down and someone just picked it up and said, oh, I could use that to finish my, my doorway. It's a, it's a very interesting um, phenomenon. Mm -hmm. So, but of course they've got centuries and centuries on us. So let's go back um, to the prosaic task of approving the minutes of the February meeting. Um, Susan, thank you. Uh, could I have a motion to approve the minutes? So move. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, do we have any other business? I have a, a heads up, I guess. The church has been looking at what to do thinking about what to do about the big windows in the sanctuary and on the front of the church. And we have an estimate from the restorer who, who restored the windows at Town Hall and for roughly $35,000, which for 10 windows seems to me to be remarkably good. Um, what we plan to do is hopefully is to ins leave, keep the existing window frames and insert double pane glass like the original plan for town hall was. And we hope to apply for CPA funding. So, and I've talked to Alan Sanderson and the windows are in such bad shape that he feels that we can probably apply for the off cycle funding so we can get it done in the fall before the winter comes. So just, just so you know, you'll probably be seeing a, a CPA funding request. Um, that sounds interesting. And, and just to remind everyone, although there were, was a, a court case within the last decade about the matter of using CPA funding for religious uh, properties, the ruling was in layman's terms that unless, unless the proposal was literally to uh, work on religious material as opposed to the historic structure of the building it, it, it was it's, uh, admissible and fundable yeah as long as the building itself is significant right in this case because the building has historic and exactly. you know from actually from the town's point of view uh, organized religion is isn't as popular as it was um, the average age of the congregation here is probably about 75. Um, the church is in good, relatively good financial shape now, but I don't know how long this congregation will be there. And at some point, then it would probably belong to the town. And having it really, it goes how, to the hmm? church. How many? Well, that's what they did in South Deerfield. They closed the how church. Does that, I'm just asking, how does that work? It's, I mean, <clears throat> You give it to the town. You give it to the town. But well, yeah. the town, the town would have to Does accept it. The town it. want it. I mean, <laughs> the town would have <laughs> to town accept have to it. <laughs> well, um, somebody, somebody would take it. I assume it's it. It would be el would be eligible. With this, we're way. You know, this is way off. I was going to say let's say the, focus, the, let's focus on the center school for now. Right. Uh, I'm yeah, just saying the, the bylaw that was passed to allow reuse of the center school would also cover the church so that you could have, you know, artist studios or offices or, or things there. So, or an, or concert venue or the acoustics are not bad. So anyway. But for now the windows. But okay. for now, for now we're trying to save the window frames. And I can tell you, if we didn't have the option of putting the double pane glass in, the windows would not be saved because there is a strong, con very powerful contingent in the church that believes that 
we should be doing the energy efficient double pane windows. So, um, if you if you uh, that being said, um, you may not know that Jade. I, I don't even know if Jade has a last name from Hartwood, who is a very <laughs> very good historic yeah. window, or is doing Ellen Burt's windows. No, it, I didn't. Uh, know. So you know, next to the Smikes house. So if you if you were interested in um, seeing her work, she, she's doing her work right now. Um, okay, um, I have a question about our next meeting, which is scheduled to be on April 18th, um, which uh, is the, the day. Historical, historical day. Yes, yes, which is the day that John Brady of um, Smith is giving a talk on the geology of Waitley. He's talking from three to five and well, I hope you will all get there, but I at least will be there. Um, so I, we, I would like to suggest that we either decide not to meet in April and I can't actually think of any agenda item today that is, makes it important for us to meet in April or shift the time a little bit. Um, what, what, what do you all think? Why don't we wait till May? May sounds fine. There's nothing much going on. Town meeting is in June, is it? When is no, time? it's in May. The town meeting is in May. It's it May is. 23rd, I think. No, uh, 24th. Right. It, it had been set on a date in April and it has now been moved to a date in May. Okay. Um, so, special, um, town, special town meeting is Wednesday night. Right. Um, so that would mean that our next meeting would be May 16th at five o'clock. Okay. Is that a Monday? Always yeah. Monday? Okay. Yes, yeah. unless we, okay. yeah, we, we wrapped ourselves in knots for a while rescheduling because there's so often federal and state holidays until Lynn Sibley confirmed that it was perfectly fine for us to meet on a state holiday if we were willing to do it, except for the planning board, the ZBA, apparently. Okay. Um, but I'm that's fine. not a concern. Hey, but if we're waiting until May to meet, I wanted to talk about the Hidden History Project because oh. Ashley Hazlitt is putting out these Facebook page, mini pages advertising each of the events. And we probably shouldn't wait till May to get her the information um, on hidden history. And so it's, if you look on Facebook, you'll see it's just what it is and for things that there is a time and place that's listed. If we want to give information on how people participate. Okay. Um, and you want a couple of sentences. Uh, yeah. Um, you would send me a description of what it is, but I don't know if we how, how far along the process you are. Of what do people do if they? I want to do the hidden history tour. What do I do? Right, we're just we're just working now on drafting that and sharing it back and forth. That's um, fine. I don't think I don't think we want that posted on something that you're putting up on Facebook now though. No, because, yeah, we, no. We, we wouldn't be posting that now. For now, we would be posting the you know, coming soon thing, but we will have to have that information probably before our May meeting, just to give them time to do what they have to do. Well, yeah. I mean, the Hidden History site's gonna go up, but it's gonna be up. It's not ending. It's not like you know the other events that have a, a beginning and an yeah. end or a day. Yeah. They live a day and then they're done. This is forever, essentially. Yeah. So, but, it, but, but I think it's the last it, thing that you talk about. I think she means them when she says them. I think she means the people putting the Facebook stuff together. Right, right. But with the marketing, the two fiftieth marketing team. If there's information that you want to get out through the two fiftieth marketing team, I don't need it now, but I probably need it around or preferably before our main meeting so i didn't want so to like, wait 
Like, well, like Friday, and Alan and Donna, we, you know, we've been talking about marketing and promoting and probably we ought to face address that a little more seriously soon. And then we can get yeah, that information to Susan. Right. Yeah, we have a meeting. We're meeting again in early April or at but, least in the first half of April. So we'll uh, we'll just remember to do that. And and I haven't forgotten, Susan, your uh, offer of some kind of handout or something. Um, I think you were talking about a bookmark and we should talk about that too. I mean, Allison and Alan and I should talk about that at the same I mean, time. Yeah. Keep in mind, you know, starting you have a thousand dollars. We can talk beyond thousand dollars, but there's a thousand dollars earmarked for this project. I know right. a fair amount of that is dedicated to the person that you're working with, I think from Ashfield. Mm -hmm. We can go to the thousand, but- We, we, we have been so pathetic that she's hardly billing us. We're not pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have demonstrated poverty success, successfully. <laughs> so- we going to kick off things at town, probably. I mean, the plan is to kick off marketing efforts at town meeting. That's where we're going to first sell some of the souvenirs, possibly start take, doing ticket orders for the ticketed event, or at least getting word out for people so they know how to do that. So that might, might be an opportunity if there's something you wanna have. We're planning on having a table or two at town meeting to distribute things. Well, we also have raised the subject several times about whether we should have a launch where we sort of walk people through the thing. Hmm. Um, but we haven't done, we, <laughs> it's on our list of things to talk about again. Yeah. <laughs> and we know, and we know you don't want anything else happening during your week. Um, <laughs> no. I mean, there can be things we would have to schedule it around the other events that are on there. Like you know, I've been working with Judy because the Historical Society wants to have a lecture that fits in very nicely. And we have found a time to do that. So right. it's not every moment is accounted for, but I'd ask you to work with us on if you wanted a an event, figuring out when we could do that that isn't competing with something else. Neil had a very funny encounter with your arts show planning group yesterday. Oh. Um, he, he and I just happened to go over to the museum because I wanted a, a, some reference material for something I'm working on. And um, I said, wow, there are a lot of people upstairs. So he walked upstairs just in time to hear Ruth Fairman lecturing the rest of the group. No, you may not tape the art to the walls of the auditorium. I mean, Neil came down with all the blood dry, <laughs> drained out of his face. Um, he, had the, he had the pleasure of explaining to them that the chairs may not simply be removed from the room. <laughs> you know, I'm glad because they should be coordinating with him for what they are doing. And I'm glad he, I didn't even know they were meeting. Yeah, yeah. Well, they didn't coordinate with him. He just wandered up, and Ruth was doing his job, which was great. <laughs> yeah. A little, a little scary. <laughs> oh, that's fine. What were you going to say, Judy? Well, I was just thinking. There's a contract that outsiders have to sign for using the building, and it has all the rules in it. Maybe they should get a copy. Of you that. know, it's actually interesting because you're right. When, when you reserve town hall, if you're not part of the town, you get a pretty good description of the rules of using the space, but it, it may be that the subgroups of the 250th aren't getting that because they're in the town. Yeah, probably. Yeah. That's a, could I ask you to ask Neil to ship that with me? And you know, sure. I could, but it's actually on the web, town website under, if you click <laughs> select board, there's a sort of town hall building use policy statement. If you don't find it, let me know. But it's, uh, I believe that it's there and it's excruciatingly detailed. <laughs> yeah, but it does say things oh. like, 
no, no taping paper, things on the wall. Fire extinguisher fire. Well, Alan, you've read it because it tells you things like if you move the chairs around, you have to put them back where you oh, found right, them, yeah. right? right? You know. <laughs> We're used yeah. to doing that as a group, so right, right. We negotiate with Paul about his watermelon Wednesday things, and that's fine. It all works. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, well, thank you all. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.